Hello, welcome to the third session of this Willow and Tissue course. Today we're moving on to more advanced techniques and we'll be looking at curved forms. We'll begin by looking at what we can make with circles, so spheres and tubes for example. We're then going to move on to look at a couple of examples of working with spirals. And finally, we're going to have a look at um, curves um, to make leaves and um, petals for flowers. Willow is naturally a bendy material, um, so you can flex it to some extent, even if it's very dry. But if you push it too much, it's going to snap. Um, the key to working with Willow is to stretch it gradually. And a good way of doing that is to use something like um, a bottle or a jar or some something that sort of size cylindrical and just slowly work it around that hard surface gradually stretching it on one side and you can get much better curves there you go it snaps because i pushed it a little bit too far but you can get much better curves that way. That snapping is quite useful for you to see uh, about how far you can push it. Um, so if you want to get really good curves, you really need to soak the willow. Um, two hours should be long enough in the bath or I soaked in the water before in a stream, um, anywhere that you can find. This piece has been soaked overnight which is even better first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to wipe off the wetness you notice this sort of brown gunk coming off so it's a little bit of a messy business wipe that off and now i'm going to start bending that and hopefully what you will see is it bends much much easier There we go, look at that, bending really very easily. You need to take your time with this, okay, a little bit at a time. Working all the way along, including these whippy ends at, at the very end. And then you've got something which is really very, very flexible. And the first thing we're going to make with this is a circle. So I can take this now and bend it around, loop it around to create a circle, bigger or smaller. The very end of the willow um, tends not to uh, bend very much. So I chop that little bit off. And there we have a circle. I could wire this together or tape it. I'm going to show you taping. It needs to be a good tack masking tape, not um, decorator's tape, which is low tack, so it doesn't take the paint off when you lift it up, um, but a higher tack one. Uh, and what I'm going to do is wrap the masking tape all the way around both pieces and back on itself. And that's very important because it doesn't really at this stage, stick that well to the willow because it's wet. But it does stick quite well to itself. I'm going to trim that. And then get more tape. And wrap that around, binding it nice and well. Bit more tape. Don't be stingy with the masking tape. You need to use a lot to get a good fix. There we go. So it's held together nice and strongly. So I've got three rings 
of the same size and I'm going to make a sphere. So I'm going to join two together at right angles to each other, like so. Masking tape, could use wire, and put that across the joint and under, and make sure it wraps around all of the pieces. Might need a little bit more masking tape on that. And the same on the other side. Make sure that's nice and even. So a bit more masking tape. This time I'm going to start underneath. I think it'd be easier. Under. Wrap it around that one. And the one next to it. Wrap this one around and around onto this one. So I'm trying to make sure it's nice and firm. That's those two. And now my third one goes at right angles to both of them. I'll slip it on the outside. Just coax it in. Oops, Perhaps it'll have to go on the inside. That's it. Work out where it's going to fit size-wise. And then I can join those together, like so, to make a basic sphere. And then in between, I can start to infill that to make a more solid shape. Um, notice that I'm using the thicker ends of the willow. The, the thin whippy ends are good for infilling in between, but the basic structure I'm making out of thicker um, willow. And I'm just going to show you one that somebody made earlier. So this piece incorporates two balls joined together. This one has extra pieces in this plane, so here and here. This one has extra pieces moving around and also diagonally across. And then it's all been joined with another piece of willow curving through here. Got a little bit of a hole in it, it do break quite easily. Um, you might want to try um, creating a ball or make some rings and play with them a little bit more uh, loosely and abstractly. Here's another one which is much looser and more abstract. So rings, um, curves, the willow being joined in a little bit more of a random, more abstract way to make an abstract hang. So your first step today is to have a play with curving um, soaked willow and dry willow. See what sort of curves you can create. Uh, think about joining them together, either creating balls and building on that or playing around with uh, curves in a more loose abstract way. Something else you can do with circles is join them together with straight pieces. So I'm just joining four straight pieces around this one. I'm joining them in the middle. So I'm going to put one more on there. To do this, I take a nice side piece of tape, put it about where I want it, put this on, and then I need to fold it over in both directions and fold it around each piece to hold it nice and steady. And what I'm now going to do is add another ring the same size in just there. And then a smaller one a bit further on and pinch it in at the bottom. So far so good. So you can see that as the smaller ring goes in, it pulls in and then comes to a point where I join pieces at the end. So just join up the other end now. Um, notice that uh, the pieces aren't quite the same length. So I've got to work out how I'm going to join them. So that appears to be the shortest one. I'm going to start with that one. 
take some tape, wrap it around. I'm going to join it to the one opposite it. So sorry, get, get that back in the camera so you can see it. So I'm now wrapping around the other piece, the same piece of tape, back around the first one, under and around. So those two are secure. Make sure they're lovely and secure. I might put a little bit of extra tape on there. That one, you can see, is definitely too long now. So I'll take my secateurs, just cut it down. Then wrap tape around this end. Bring it into the others and wrap the tape under and around. Last piece again needs a trim. Always remember to wrap the tape around or around the stem to help it secure. People sometimes ask you know, how do you decide whether to use tape on a joint or wire? It really does depend on what you think or what you find works the best. So cross pieces, you know, definitely wire can be as good as tape. Ends like that, you really have to use tape. So you just got to try it out and see which works best. And there we have a pod shape or torpedo, or whatever you would like to call it. If we were to do the same thing, but with um, a couple of curved pieces, we're going to get quite a different shape. Um, so here is a piece of willow which I curved whilst it was wet and left to dry. Um, I curved it on this. This is a basic jig. A jig is any sort of device which helps you um, shape something in a particular way. So the basic jig, this has rows of screws, which I can bend things around to get different shapes. Somewhere I have some other shapes that I've bent um, around on this different way. So I'm just going to show you those. Uh, these two pieces were made with the, the same jig, just varying um, which screws were used. Um, so you could do the same by banging nails into a piece of wood. Just make sure the wood is fairly thick so that they don't bend under the strain. Jigs are very, very useful, and I'll be showing you the use of them uh, in some of the other projects in this session. So I've been working on this a little bit, um, joining rings in. I've brought the rings smaller this side and joined the ends. Um, notice I'm just doing the two pieces at the moment. I'm not doing a third or a fourth piece. Uh, that will come later on. Uh, but at the moment that leaves me maximum flexibility. And notice how it flexes and moves depending on how I join things together. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring those ends together to finish it and then add the other pieces in. So quite like those ends being a longer piece so i think i'm just simply gonna take them together for now and i'll take nice and tight and round around okay now ready to put on other sides by the way it doesn't have to be um four sides it could be three it could be six it could be as many um side pieces as you like so the number of ways that i could put on these side pieces. I could put um, individual pieces um, all the way along. Um, for example, I could put in curved pieces. Um, I could use straight pieces. I could just about manage to um, put in um, dry willow, but for maximum sort of bendiness and flexibility, I've got some 
um, soaked willow and I flexed it first one direction for half it and then the other the direction for the other so it was going to curve quite easily. I'm going to join that in and then join another piece on the bottom. So I'm going to start by joining this piece on one end so taping it into the end here making sure it's nice and firmly fixed so I've got the curve going in the right direction yes I'm just going to work my way along taping it on So here's my bendy creation um, and now to apply skin now with anything that's curving you have to be a little bit careful about how you apply you can't apply big sheets at once um, it's probably best to do it in a small sections so maybe that shape or maybe just about to there but um, if you apply um, too large a sheet you're going to get something that's very very wrinkled and it's going to not be a shame because you'll lose the shape so just to quickly run over um, applying the tissue I've got a piece of acetate that's to put uh, the tissue on this piece has been cut to go on that section and I've got watered down PVA which I'm going to put all the way through it the acetate is so it doesn't stick to the table basically on the frame I'm going to put undiluted PVA I'm just getting out of this jar apply it generously make sure you plenty on the masking tape too lots on there then I peel this up carefully place oops place it on trying to get it tight as I can and just pull those edges and go around the edges if possible folding them under and if you can't you always trim them later making sure it's nice and firmly stuck down on the willow to move on to the next section i could probably do this section but if i want to move it around without sticking to the table i need to dry that section so i take my hair dryer put it on a low setting and dry Gently. For a few minutes. And once it is nearly dry, you can put it on the high setting. Turn it off a second. But if you put it on the high setting straight away, you are quite likely to blow the tissue loose. Okay, so start on a low set. Oops! <laughs> low setting. There is my finished structure ready um, to be decorated if I want to. Although I quite like these shapes um, in white. Next, we'll look at making a spiral shape um, like this, loosely based on a shell. So my starting point is soaked willow, drying it off. And then flexing it again, exactly the same. So taking it, bending it carefully around.
do take your time with this. I'm rushing just a little bit. Okay, and this time I'm going to start at the whippy end. Now, if you look at that end, actually some of that is, is really too thin to work with. So I'm going to chop it off. You can see it's got a little break there already. Uh, so I'm going to chop that off. And then I'm going to start to coil this into a small loop. Like so. Going to take a piece of, we get a piece of wire this time. You could use tape, I'm choosing to use wire. It's a slightly different finish. And I'm going to bind that together, twisting the wire around to hold it in place. Nice and tightly. That's my center. Then I'm going to start to curve outwards, just sort of bending this around. Oops. Okay, I've got that coiled round to where I want it. And now I'm going to bend the piece inwards. So in order to do that, I'm squeezing so I want an angle and squeezing the willow nice and hard to flatten the section and then it will bend nice and easy inwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wire it there, but I'm also going to wire it temporarily here whilst it dries. Okay, so take a piece of wire. This is a little bit more awkward. What I'm going to do, slip the wire under and then just give it one twist to start with. And I can let go of that bit and start to bind it, wrapping the wire around every stem. and then to hold it in place and continue that line across there put another piece of wire there Is that right? Yeah, just adjust it a little bit. And another piece just there. When this dries, I'll be able to cut that piece out uh, and the willow should stay in that curve. Okay, but I just need to leave it to dry now. So here's one that I did earlier. I want to turn this into something a bit more three-dimensional, um, a little bit like this one that somebody made uh, previously. You'll notice that the, the final coil in actual fact they're done with wire, but the principle is still the same. So I need to make a second piece, which is exactly the same size as my original. In order to do that, I've created what's called a jig. This is my jig. And what I'm going to do is take the willow 
and twist it around there. So I have dried and flexed my soaked willow and now I'm going to create a loop around the screws in the middle with the whippy end. Secure that with some wire. So twist the wire around the two parts of the willow overlap. Keep it nice and tight so it doesn't slip out. And then I'm going to start to take the willow around the jig. Take my time making sure that it is bending nicely. Following the curves of my design, using the screws to just sort of hold it in place, but the curving you need to do by hand. There, to that point. Then at this point, I'm going to take some pliers and squeeze it in order to flatten that section which makes it easier to bend it without it breaking. Then that will just bend down there. Now it will hold just tucked onto those screws for now but I will put a little bit of a tie there anyway which we'll need when we take it off with the jig. So that needs to be left to dry thoroughly and when it comes off it should hold its shape. The willow can take um, a few hours or even overnight to dry. If you're impatient to get on with your work what you can do is once you've got this bent into a shape is put in supporting pieces around it um, spaced out to create some sort of pattern which is what I'm going to start to do now on this one. So I start there, I'm going to cut a piece that would fit into that gap. Ha, the end pinged off somewhere. I'm then going to take masking tape. These techniques were covered in the first two sessions but I will just repeat them. I'm going to wrap the masking tape around the end there and then wrap it around the spiral. Try to make sure I go over the joint on both sides so it's nice and firm. Take another piece. Again, wrap it around a piece of willow. This is dry willow. I should have said that earlier. Um, it's nice and rigid. Wrapping it around the frame. If I carry on doing that, I will then be able to uh, to finish this off a lot quicker. So I'm going to add the other pieces in. There it is with its spokes in. And as you can see, the spokes add an interesting pattern as well to a piece of work. Here are the two halves to my shell. And as you can see, I've put uprights coming up from this one at the same point as where the spokes are on this one. Um, just this is exactly the same as um, session two making the stars. I'm now going to take this and tape it onto the uprights so I've got a 3D structure. There, that's now ready to apply tissue. I've applied a single piece of tissue to both of the um, sides of this now. Um, I've applied it like a pie crust, if you like, a little bit bigger uh, and dried it with a hairdryer. It's still a couple of wet spots, but it's largely dry. And now I can take a knife and work around and just trim that neatly off. So you can see it's just coming very easily, trimming off to neaten that up. And then I will do exactly the same on the sides probably using longish panels because I can use a flat piece so I can use a flat piece 
of tissue all the way along that sort of area. So there's the finished thing ready for decorating. You'll notice how the pattern shows through very nicely through the tissue. It's a different pattern this side. Notice also that I left one end open in case I want to put lights in. Here's another spiral idea, which I'll just talk you through. Is a ring here at the bottom and attached to it four verticals, which are then joined at the top. A piece of willow has been flexed and then start joined at this point here. Let's move it back into the camera and then twisted slowly attaching each point around and around and around up to the top and here it is um, with a loose skin of tissue over the top starting point for this flower is a simple petal form. Uh, so a piece of soaked willow bent around a curve and then the two ends joined. Um, if you want, you can make something much more complicated. Uh, for example, I made this one uh, using a jig. It's even much bigger, uh, but that's up to you. Uh, for the purpose of demonstrating, just working on a simple one will help me show you uh, everything that you can do. So the first thing to say is, although it's curved in that direction, I would also like to see it curved in this direction. Um, and this needs to be done while it's still wet. It's got some flexibility. Just need to be quite careful. And what I'm going to do is physically attach it to a curve like I've done here. So I'm going to take one end and to join that as well as I possibly can. Try and bind that in place nice and thoroughly. So plenty of masking tape. And then push and bend it so that it's curving and tape on down the other end. So whilst it's pushed and bent, get that tape on any way that you can to get it to secure. like so. So it's just keeping that curve still. Here's one I did earlier, which I'm going to cut off because it's dry. Get that tape off and off of this end. And what we should find now that it's dried is it, it's kept that curve okay of course you might want it to curve in two directions i set up uh, a jig here i screwed two different size tubes and bent the petal through there and then secured again with two screws okay so that's those are the petals that I'm going to make, I'm going to make a few of those and then join them together around a ring. So I now have all of my elements ready, a ring uh, for the centre uh, and bigger and smaller petals. The smaller petals curve in one direction, the bigger ones curve in and out gently. So. 
I'm going to attach some wire to the bases of these so that I can wire it onto the center and then cover them in tissue. So I've now got uh, all my pieces ready to assemble my flower. Um, I've made a central piece which is a little bit more elaborate. It's a ring with more rings joined to it. Um, this is for two reasons. One is to act as a basket to put a light in and the other is to represent the center of the flower. It's fairly easy to make something like this uh, and I'll show you in a minute how I did it. But what I'm going to be doing is taking uh, first of all these smaller four leaves and wiring them into the base and then I'm going to wire on the bigger leaves. I'm, in order to uh, get through the tissue I'm just going to punch it with a brad or um, or a sharp nail big needle anything like that would do uh, focusing for a moment on the dome in the middle uh, this looks more complicated than it is it started with a central ring and then two slightly smaller rings taped in at angles like that and then more added on. So I think I had three in one direction and two in the other, but all taped in the middle, all joined towards the sides to create that dome shape. Right, on to putting my flower together. So I've punctured a couple of holes in the, uh, the dome, and now I'm gonna thread through carefully, pulling that tight. Just a couple of times, threading that through, and similarly with the other one. And then I will bind them together at the back. So turning it over, just sort of twist those nice and tightly together. So I've got my leaf joined on right seven to go so what i have now is my basic flower and what i can start to do is shape it by bringing pieces up and i could join them together like that this is what i think i will do now i could join them with wire or i could join them with a little bit of glue I think I'll try just a little bit of glue. So there is my final flower. And I'll just show you in a moment what it looks like lit up. You can find lots of other examples of willow in tissue art. Um, using curves on the internet so it's worth doing your own research and perhaps trying to develop some uh, some of your own ideas or you can just explore one or two of the techniques that I've shown you in this video um, that's all for this session next session we'll be looking at uh, animals bye bye